is there a relationship between the decline of Christianity and our increasing, I'm going to use the word very frankly, incoherency as a society, in your view? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I believe there's a connection there. Look, if you were unfortunate and you lost your parents and you didn't have a family, et cetera, all of that takes one way of constructing identity off the table. But kicking Christianity out of the public square takes the other obvious way of constructing identity off the table. If you were that figurative orphan, you could find a home in Christianity. It would teach you that you had obligations to real life fellow human beings, that you're supposed to do good works for them, that you are brothers and sisters united in Christ, that you have a place in the cosmos and a place of relationship to the supernatural, that you are made in the image of God. Christianity supplies a community ready-made, including for people who have no other community. And so trying to disgrace Christianity just hurts the most vulnerable by depriving them of that option too. And we have to ask ourselves, John, I, I know as well as you do what elites have to say about Christianity and what all the problems are with it, but are our societies really getting nicer because we've been liberated from all of that? In the United States, uh, the war against Christianity, it's putting it too strongly, but the, um, the adversaries of Christianity go after Christian charities. And this is a point I think is very important. They go after emergency pregnancy centers. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren said, for example, that she wanted to abolish all 300 of them in her state. They go after adoption agencies. They try to make it hard to send presents to kids in Guatemala if they have any kind of religious content, et cetera, et cetera. Who does this hurt? <laughs> this hurt the intended beneficiaries of these charities. So here we have an example where I think progressivism, the kind of progressives who support these efforts, who get up in the morning happy to be uh, making food and diapers less available to desperate women who need them for their babies, those kinds of people are not enhancing our public square. They're not making our societies a kinder, gentler place. And this problem, I think we see across the West, the idea that we will liberate ourselves by getting rid of Christianity uh, doesn't take into account that we are liberating ourselves from a code of conduct that tells us we are supposed to take care of one another, we are supposed to love one another, we are supposed to do good works and all the rest of it. So yes, I think the decline of Christianity across the West is part of the ferocity out there. It's, it's part of why politics feels so vicious these days, because the code of conduct that would keep things more civil is, um, is on the decline. It does seem to me that uh, one of the consequences of people no longer regularly attending church services uh, where they're reminded of their own failings and reminded that they have an obligation to their neighbours and that forgiveness is a good thing, is that we no longer do forgiveness. And I wonder how any society can work when we won't forgive. And Lord Jonathan Sachs, sadly now no longer with us, made the observation to me, and listeners will have heard me say this, that uh, in the past perhaps, but our society no longer does forgiveness. The best you can hope for is that people might forget if we've made a mistake or done something inappropriate, but social media doesn't allow for that either. So we're very harshly judgmental. We seem to have found new ways of destroying people's lives if they dare to dissent. Yes, absolutely. And John, this is why I have some hope about identity politics and its eventual fate. I don't think we can live in this unforgiving prison that identity politics provides. I don't think human beings can live without forgiveness. And the problem with identity politics is that it casts everyone into the allies camp or the enemies camp. And if you are in the enemies camp, if you are an oppressor, 
there is never going to be exoneration for you. I think deep down, intuitively, people know that this trap can't go on, that everyone makes mistakes, that they need to be forgiven for those mistakes, they need society to forgive them for those mistakes. And identity politics has no language for that. It has no mechanism for repentance and exoneration and redemption. And I believe over time that this will spell the doom of identity politics as people who find themselves in need of those things realize that they can't be had in this crabbed little political world.